This is our 13th day of practice, and we've got the ability and, and the returning people and all, all the tools to have a fairly good football team, but uh, I think we have to decide, first of all, if we want to be a good football team before that's going to happen. Uh, number one, we want to be better than we were last year. Number two, we want to finish the season on a positive note. We want to finish the season on an up, upward uh, trend instead of a downward trend. We want to have a better record than we did last year. Those are, I think, three very realistic goals for us, and those are what we're going to try to achieve. Hornet football 1989 has been a season of snapshots, a season of memories etched indelibly into the minds of the fans, the coaches, and the players. This has indeed been a season of first and best, a season of destiny. This Hornet team is the first in ESU history to ever win nine regular season games. With this victory over Fort Hayes State, the Hornets qualified for their third NAIA National Playoff appearance. For the first time in school history, the Hornets captured the CSIC Championship. The Hornets spent the entire season ranked in the NAIA's top ten. No easy feat considering that six of ESU's ten opponents were ranked in the top twenty. The Hornets began the season ranked eighth. They jumped as high as fourth before settling into the fifth spot after suffering their first and only defeat of the year at the hands of top-ranked Central Arkansas. During this season, we saw six Horn athletes earn CSIC and District 10 Player of the Week honors. We shared in the personal triumph of Alvester Bobby, who after waiting patiently in the wings for two years, exploded on the football field and rushed for more than 1,000 yards. He capped off his season by tying a school record for most rushing touchdowns and by being named the NAIA National Player of the Week following the Fort Hayes State game. We saw our defense swarm over opposing teams to record quarterback sacks, losses, and create turnovers. Our offensive line cut through bigger defenses to create game-winning holes. our special teams make big play after big play. something special happening on the football field this year. Could it be that the Kramer magic had finally come together in all phases of the game? Had the Hornets finally become the team that could win the big game? I don't, 
I can't put anything on these guys as saying that they can or cannot do this. You're right, the sky's the limit with these guys because they're competitors. These guys are fighters. They're going to go after it. They're not going to lay down for anybody. These guys, will, they'll, hey, I don't care. They're, they're going to be there, and uh, I got confidence that these guys are going to show themselves real good in the playoffs. They're a super bunch of kids. <laughs> Perhaps the most vivid memories of this season are the frozen images of different games and vision of personal triumphs and sacrifices. Picture, early downs after the Hornets snared a 5-0 win on the opening game against Harding University. The questions came early. Were the Hornets for real? Could they be a good team? The Cine drive to Colorado to watch the Hornet offense explode for 35 points against Western State in the 35-20 win. Previous questions about the offense quickly died. The Parents' Day victory in front of the largest crowd of the year. 6,200 fans saw Arkansas Tech jump to a 10-0 lead before the Hornets exploded with a 42-point rally to win the game by the score of 42-17. After the Hornets' first and only loss to Central Arkansas, the coaches and players realized that the only ones who could defeat the Hornets were themselves. After two tough road victories in Nebraska against Wayne State and Kearney State, the Hornets returned home to defeat Northwestern Oklahoma by the score of 37 to 13. Back on the road again to play a tough one and seven Northeastern Oklahoma team that wouldn't break until ESU special teams pulled out the victory late in the fourth quarter. Seeing the Larry Kramer class when he pulled his starters early in the second quarter to prevent a blowout against Panhandle State. Memories of having the shoe on the other foot live long with Kramer. The most emotional game of the year at Hayes, where we witnessed a 12-minute scoring battle that saw three quarterbacks go down and 34 points go up on the scoreboard. Can we ever forget the determination of Tim Kramer and Mike Birch, who both played with pain? The frustration and excitement of watching Arnie Bircham drop two passes and then catch the one that mattered the most. The thrill of seeing Matt Kaler, who after giving a fiery halftime speech, snag an interception and score the final touchdown. A vivid recurring memory of the 1989 season is this image of the Hornet machine, which when in danger of letting victory slip through their fingers, pulls itself together, gets down to business, and captures another W. Defeat is a foreign word in this team's vocabulary. Theirs is a worker's attitude that Larry Kramer and his coaches have instilled and nurtured. Tell you what, I, I've got a lot of confidence in this football team, and 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 they feel good about themselves, and they have a, a competitive edge uh, that that I haven't seen here for a long time. And I think when an obstacle presents itself, these kids might overcome it. And and again, I, I going into these playoffs, I think we're in as good a shape as anybody at this particular point. No one can beat us if we're playing at our potential. And as long as you feel that way, you're going to play your best every play. We've also got some momentum this year. We've won um, our last six ball games, I think, in a row. And um, it's been a while since we've lost a game. And I hope everybody's kind of forgot how to lose a game. I think we've got it figured out how to win one. And um, with the kind of effort that we're giving right now, I think we're going to do a pretty good job. Yeah, we're excited about getting into the playoffs again. You know, this is a, a we've always, we've last three years, we, or two years, we've made it this far. But it's just that, that extra step that we need to take. So everybody's excited about that. You know, we've accomplished a championship. Now it's time to accomplish, you know, a first round victory in the playoffs. Had a pretty good season. It's been real fun. It's accomplishing something that's never been done here. And that yeah. feels good. Feels really real good. good. <laughs> Get that championship ring. Oh, yeah. The telling snapshot from the 1989 season is the one in which you look for the stars on the team and you find none. Even the coaches have a hard time pointing to the team's superstar because for each game, a different player has stepped forward to get the job done. The 1989 Hornets will long be remembered as a team who played as a true team. You can say many things about the 1989 Hornets football team, but this group of blue-collar workers has played smash-mouth football against formidable opponents. They have made things happen by responding to challenges. A team in every sense of the word, they have finally made the big plays 
won the big game. The 1989 Hornet football team ended this season of destiny by playing for the NAIA National Championship game. For the first time in school history, the team advanced through the playoffs by beating Harding University and Adam State College to reach that National Championship game. On a cold December Saturday in Tennessee, the Hornets met four-time national champion Carson Newman. Although the Hornets missed capturing the national championship title by the final score of 34 to 20, the season still ended on a positive note. The players and coaches showed themselves and their fans that they did control their own destiny. Emporia State University also sent a strong message to the entire country. Football is alive and well in Kansas. More importantly, the Hornet football team will be back next year. Count on it.